Here we're going to use Cloy's timing kit 9-4201S as in Samuel. Okay, we've got our uh, crankshaft uh, keyway at 12 o'clock, so let's put in a new crank sprocket. So the uniquely colored link is on the intake timing mark. Slip it down into the engine chest. One side, one of each side of these is going to go on the side of a, a protruding piece out there called a boss. And then we'll slip that on. Okay, now we're going to take our 18 millimeter socket on here and turn this turn this bolt in. I just finger tight for now. Okay, now we're going to bring the adjustable timing guide. There it goes. Now we'll go down below and finish this up. Uh, let's go ahead and put the, uh, the new oiler that came in the kit uh, in now. And it's just a 10 millimeter uh, bolt on there. And it's an improved design with better oil flow. This is 89 inch pounds. Okay, now I'm kind of pulling the chain up from the top because there isn't any clearance on this guide. Meanwhile, holding the guide. I have the screw with the ready too, by the way. Because once this is in here, you're not going to slip this chain by it, so you've got to do it now. So I'll torque that up to that same 89 inch pounds. Okay, now we're going to link the exhaust mark on this cam that's going to go on the exhaust side. This gear with the, uh, the other mark, the other mark on the chain, kind of the bluish mark. Get that centered on it. And now, let's put your bolt in loosely. Your new cam bolt in loosely. So it's not seated on here yet. Because we're going to kind of rotate it into position. All through this procedure, keep your eye on the marks on the chains. So rotating this intake cam counterclockwise. Now I did struggle a bit to get this sprocket on, this exhaust cam sprocket on. I want to show you what I did to finally get it. Now, of course, you have to have the bottom of the camshaft lined up and, and put your wrench on here. But what I was having trouble with is getting it seated over here on the other side. And what finally did it for me was uh, just using a, a marker and making a line on the engine, on the cam, um, on this piece on top of the cam and on the gear, where they were um, lined up. So I had taken off the, the, the chain back off and, and set the sprocket in place and then made the mark. And when I then when I advanced it uh, with my wrench here, with my 24 millimeter um, crescent wrench, <laughs> um, I was able to get it in there almost right away. Otherwise I was just fumbling and fumbling trying to hold everything together and, and get that thing seated. Just a little tip. Okay, so next goes in this fixed guide on the right here. screws to hold it down, a lower and an upper. I'm not going to turn these all in until I got them both started. Turn these in all the way until they're both started. The other one goes through that, if you remember that plug on the top, and that's kind of a challenge for me. So we all have our little special challenges, don't we? So for me on this one, getting the screws started. 
in this blind hole there. And it's just impossible. I'm just trying to get it into the slot, creating my own shade. There. Oh boy, I think I lost it. Okay, taking a peek down in there, looks like I've got it. So whatever, now I'm going to... Now I'm going to put on a uh, put on the universal and then a little extension, torque this thing down. Okay, we've got this torqued back up, reaching through the hole there. Eighty-nine inch pounds, but no way measuring it. Okay, we're turning this access plug back in to put some anti seize on that for sure, and torque it to sixty-six. Pounds or some reasonable facsimile. Using again our using again our special cutoff 10 millimeter Allen wrench. That's basically uh, just going to be a little bit of a wrestling match to get it in there and turn it in. Forced in this case to use a little cheater bar to help me out to get some torque. That should do it. Okay, so just going over this one more time. Everything's in order. Here's our crank. Here's our blue. A similar colored chain link on the white mark. We're at noon on here, 12 o'clock since we're keeping time here. Now on the intake sprocket, here we are, lined up at um, the 2 o'clock. And on the exhaust sprocket, at the 10 o'clock. One more word, one more observation on these timing marks on the crankshaft, on the camshaft sprockets. Their position is solely determined by the chain. There is no way, once these chain links are lined up, there is no way, even if you get these angles equal, turn this, in other words, right now I'd have to rotate it that way, that I'm ever going to get this at exactly 60 degrees on this side, which would be equivalent to 10 o'clock, and 60 degrees on this side, which would be equivalent to 2 o'clock. If they were equal, they're going to be somewhere a little different than that. So this is a guideline. The timing is almost solely determined here by the chain, by the colored links on the chain. And trust that to get you where you need to be. And all three of these are in the same on their timing marks. That's what determines it, not the physical angle of these sprockets at the end. Okay, now in the process of installing the um, exhaust cam gear, this winds up rotating a little bit. Camshaft, crankshaft. I put it back because so I noticed there was slack here. At the, at the high noon position, there is no slack in this chain between um, the crank and the intake sprocket. So the only slack that remains now is over here on the side where we're going to be installing the tensioner. So up next is the upper timing chain guide. So with an 18 millimeter uh, socket, torque wrench, backup wrench on the uh, camshaft, torque it to 63 foot-pounds, plus 30 degrees. And repeat on the other sprocket. Okay, this Cloys kit contains the uh, newer style tensioner. It's got a clip on there for disassembly. If you want to deactivate it, uh, once it's activated, the bump on the end, same um, inch and a quarter socket of I'm not sure what the metric equivalent is, but this is deactivated until there's no spring tension on it. Let's go put it in. Nice. Yeah, we'll turn it in and then we'll get our our uh, socket, torque it to specs. So this goes into 55 foot pounds. Alright. Okay, I got this long screwdriver. 
I got a piece of rubber taped onto the tip. Now I'm going to reach down into the chest and activate this tensioner. Okay, the activation process amounts to taking your tool, getting it on the on the chain, right? That's by the adjustable guide. Pushing down on it. Okay, nothing's happening. Okay, back in the deactivated state. We're going to put it back in. I'm going to be watching closely this time because I believe this may have been may have activated actually right upon install. Might have been enough to put enough pressure on this to uh, cause it to uh, activate. Yeah, this chain was loose before in the tensioner. I could move it. So it had thing went ahead and activated right on install. I never had to hit it with a the push the, the push deal pushed in a couple millimeters with a screwdriver at all. Okay, having just completed uh, replacing the timing chain and all other uh, timing chain components, now we're going to walk through the uh, uh, valve positions on entire engine uh, cycle, four-stroke cycle on cylinder one. Okay, here's my indicator of uh, piston position in the cylinder. Lower one would be piston at top dead center. The longer one, it's going to be piston at bottom. Okay, spark plugs out. Our little, our little indicator is in. Okay, so the piston's up. We're at top dead center after exhaust. And there's our crank at 12 o'clock, zero degrees, our starting position. And the position of the exhaust cam is about 7 o'clock, having come off the exhaust valve. Moving over to the intake, it's about 5, approaching the intake valve. And our sprockets are at 10 on exhaust and 2 on intake. Okay, we're going to crank this by hand now. And here we go down, going into the intake stroke. See our intake valve popping open, the cam activating it. Again going down, and the cam is off the valve. Now we're at the bottom of the piston stroke at end of intake. There's our exhaust cam at 11, and our intake cam about 7.30. Sprocket at about 6 o'clock, having made a 180 degree revolution. Next stroke is compression. And so up we come again, and our cams are moving, both exhaust, both valves are closed. And let's see where we end up. Okay, we're all the way up again, and we're at 1 o'clock on the exhaust, and about 11 o'clock on the intake. At top of compression, our sprocket, crank sprocket back at noon, having made a 360 degree turn. Okay, now we're at the top of the power stroke. I'm going to be heading back down, delivering the fuel charge. And then there we go. At the bottom, let's check the cams again. And the exhaust is sitting at 5. And the intake at about 2, 2.30. We've gone one and a half revolutions, 540 degrees on the crank. And now our next stroke is going to be exhaust. We're going to be coming back up again. There we go. Exhaust cam activating the exhaust valve. Going down. And we're all the way back up. Now made two revolutions. 720 degrees. And, and we're right back where we started. 7 o'clock on the exhaust valve. 5 o'clock on the intake. Hey, this is what we wanted. Let's look at our sprockets. Intake back at 2. And exhaust back at 10. So this is uh, back in the correct timing position. So we've confirmed now that um, everything stayed in order during two revolutions of engine of the engine, and we're ready to put this car back together. Thanks for watching.